Hey, hey Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney adventures. We are going to do the trial now. So, let's get going. I hope this trial, like this case, ends with this trial. I don't want to do another investigation. Since this is the second case, I'm hoping it is a only one investigation scene. The old Bailey, this place always makes me feel strange. I seem to get chills down my spine and break out in a nervous sweat all, all at the same time. Well, I didn't think I'd be back here so soon. That's my line. Good morning! Ah, good morning, Mr. Natsume. It was only two days ago that I declared I was declared not guilty here. Yes, we somehow managed to prove he didn't stab Miss Green in the back. But now this! Another morning, another murder, and here I am again in this hellhole! Can't keep coming to court! I'm beginning to think he's right. It really does seem as though he's cursed. Mr. Naruhoro, I'm afraid I have bad news. Oh! Mr. Natsume, good morning. Yes, morning. So, here we are again. Yes, again. Judicial Assistant Miss Mikotoba Esquires, what's the bad news? Oh dear, you heard, did you? you? Come in shouting at the top of your voice. People can't help hearing what you say. Oh, I'm sorry. You've done nothing wrong, Miss Susato. Now, what is it? Well, it seems that the prosecution in today's trial will be led by Lord Barak von Zeeks. Barak von Zeeks? I still never figured out what his um name's pun is. Van Van Zeeks. Gar! Oh no! Oh no no! So-called Reaper of the Bailey, the most legendary prosecutor in the land. In the trial two days ago, he pursued Sosekisan and I relentlessly. Of course, by the skin of our teeth, he managed to pull through. But still. Perhaps Mr. Natsume's acquittal in the last trial wasn't the end of the matter, after all. Yes, I know what you're thinking. A legend of the Reaper that says, Nothing can save a person in the dock when Lord Van Zeeks is prosecuted. Who oh, no. And even if that person is found not guilty, the accused will meet a mysterious end one way or another. We've experienced it firsthand. Well, clearly he's innocent because he made it back to Japan, so... The man we successfully defended met the most terrifying end after his acquittal, right here in the Old Bailey. Ah, do I have to put up with those ice-cold eyes boring into my soul again? Cursed by evil spirits, and now by the Reaper! Pair of petrifying perils, potentially! Well, if it's potentially... At least you appear to have hope, Mr. Natsume. Welcome, student Mr. Naruhoro Esquire! Uh, yes? I'm... I'm innocent! You have to believe me! You, more than anyone now! Don't worry. I'll be your steadfast ally every step of the way in this battle. I promise. And this promises to be a hard battle, I fear. Well, we don't really have any evidence. So... Oh, we might have to do another investigation. To get more evidence. Oh... The trial is scheduled to begin shortly. We should move into the courtroom. Let's go. Oh yes, I forgot to say. I'm afraid he won't be able to make it. Mr. Sholmes, I mean. That's probably for the best. Oh, but he hasn't really been here for any of our trials anyway, so what does that matter? If he were here, I might be tempted to rely on his help. And that could be seen as a weakness. If Lord Van Zeeks were to notice, he'd prey on it mercilessly. At least, that's my gut feeling. Just a matter of You're right. Yes, you're so right. Oh, well said, locum student Mr. Naruhura Esquire. Well said. Swear on the sword at my side. <gasps> the wind at my back and the sword at my side. And on the spirit of Kazuma that it harbors. I'll show him what a Japanese lawyer can do. I'll set you free with honor. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, 
Honor! <coughs> oh. I totally forgot his voice. Uh, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the councils for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. No, it's Dracula. The prosecution is ready. The defense is ready, my lord. Readiness for the trial, my lord Nipponese friend, is not what the defense needs. What you need is readiness for your inevitable defeat. But I won't be defeated because Natsume is innocent. Not just my, uh, just in my imagination. It's really there. Lord Van Zeeks has such an animosity towards us Japanese for some reason. Because he's racist! <laughs> it was some time ago now that he first became known as the Reaper of the Bailey, I believe. These past few years, he hasn't appeared in court at all. Yet now he's back in the courtroom, though for some reason, only when I'm defending. This Reaper, with his curious disdain for us Japanese, is a prosecutor shrouded in mystery. Racist. Still, this isn't the time to be pondering that. I have to concentrate on Soseki-san's trial. Furthermore, I now call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to fulfill your duty? Oh my gosh, it's him! The the banker guy. Absolutely, I have a feeling this Larkin wasn't isn't a, wasn't innocent before. I must say that I feel especially ruthless on days when my heart refuses to sit right. Oh, it's him too! Whoa, he cleaned up again. Oh, this is less cleaned up than last time. Oh well. Oh, well I rather like how you're wearing your hat. I think the ruthless look is very fetching actually. Whoa! Fancy lady, I've never seen her before. Need to be somewhere at 10 o'clock. I have a very important meeting. Let's make this quick. Ah, him! Couldn't agree more. I need to take home five bob tonight or the missus will go through the roof. Ah, the doctor. Oh, may the Lord show us all the light here. Lead us flock to a righteous verdict. The British jury system is so different to our own, isn't it? Quite extraordinary to think that the power of judgment is in the hands of six members of the public. And that the judge can only pass sentence when all jurors are in agreement about the defendant's guilt. Didn't... what? Didn't they say the judge could override it? Oh well, whatever. Six citizens of London, chosen at random, or at least that's the idea. The prosecution would draw attention to the fact that the accused was on trial here but two days ago. Accordingly, were possible, the same jurors have been asked to return for duty today. Why? They would be biased then because they're like, we already saw the proceedings of his last trial. I don't like it. Whatever. Very well, let us commence the trial. Lord Van Zeeks, your opening statement, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is not the intent of the prosecution to cast doubt over your past decision. However, the innocent verdict afforded to this eccentric Nipponese before has had dire consequences. Did the accused repent for his wrongdoing in that affair? Far from it. Instead, he used his freedom to perpetrate a most blood-curdling crime. Namely, that of the attempted murder of his neighboring lodger, an innocent Englishman. To explain the circumstances of the crime, the prosecution calls its first witnesses to the stand. The detective responsible for investigating the scene and the accused himself. The accused can't be a witness, right? Because... Because that... whatever. Witnesses, your names and occupations, please. Sir, Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. Ah, Sosuke Natsume from the Empire of Japan. My government ordered me to come here as a student, to study your language and culture. Mr. Natsume. Yes, my lord, sir. I'm quite sure I'm not mistaken. But you swore an oath never to set foot in my courtroom again. I remember it as if it were yesterday. <laughs> the 
day before, in fact, my lord, but close enough. Ugh, believe me, this is the last place I want to be. Inspector, let's hear from you first. Explain the case for the court. Right you are, sir. The incident occurred at the Garadam Postal, where the defendant has lodgings. In the ground floor of the room of the victim, Mr. William Shamsbeer. The defendant has already admitted to visiting the victim on the night in question. Mr. Shamsbeer coll collapsed in his room as a result of poisoning by strychnine? Strychnine? I'm gonna say strychnine. It was found the following morning when, he, when the landlord, suspecting something was wrong, broke down the door. This means, I presume, that the door to the victim's room was locked at the time of the incident? Correct, my lord. It was locked from the inside, making entry to exit... Entry to or exit from the room impossible. Although the victim, Mr. Shams, bear lived to tell the tale. He very nearly didn't. The man was halfway to heaven when we first found him. Hmm. I was the first officer on the scene, my lord. And I have a photographic print here that I took at the time to show how it looked. Was he facing the left? No, he was facing the right. No, we couldn't see his face, so he was facing the left. Um, what is that puddle on the floor? I don't think we could have investigated it when we were at the house because the view was blocked from us. Yes, a chilling scene indeed. This man looks very much deceased. That's right. Everyone present present believed that's exactly what it was. But well, I shall accept this photographic print as evidence for the court. Crime scene photograph. Now then, Mr. Natsume. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Yes! <laughs> As the defendant, do you have anything to say at this juncture? They're, they're haunted. Haunted by evil spirits. Good gracious, what's haunted? My lodgings! There's been a whole series of strange happenings in my lodgings! A tenant before me died of mysterious circumstances. A woman was stabbed by no one on the street outside. Paper was poisoned. And me! What about me? Gemly Tumsty Tongues. <laughs> hey, Salk, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend, dude. I've nearly been killed countless times. Killed, Mr. Natsume? How? Even on that fateful night, it happened when I returned from Mr. Shamspear's room. I lit my gas stove and climbed into bed, but before long, the stove went out. And somebody tried to kill me. You must always extinguish all fires before retiring for the night, Mr. Natsume. But it's so cold, my, my runny nose would freeze. The point is I, I didn't poison my neighbor. Oh, why am I being accused of this? Why is my existence so cursed? Thank you, witnesses. I believe I have a reasonably clear picture of events. If I could raise one more point, my lord. One more. Conclusive point. Conclusive? Go on. Fortunately, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, has regained consciousness after his ordeal. And he has named the true culprit. The poison consumed by the victim was administered in a cup of tea that he drank on the night in question. He, my lord, that was brought to the victim's room by the accused. The accused? Good grief! He's lying! Order! Yes, that's the crux of this whole case. If Sosaki-san is innocent, then why? Why has the victim accused him? Because he's hiding something shady! Well, Mr. Matsume, what have you to say to this accusation? That evening, yes. I did take some freshly brewed tea with me when I visited Mr. Shamspear's room as a gift. The public water pump outside always freezes at night. So they brought... I bought bottled water especially to make it. And this is the result! Never want to touch tea again, never! The public pump was frozen, you say? That's not information we've heard before. 
That will do, thank you. Now, according to our laws, the defense must have the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses at least once. Therefore, I call upon these witnesses now for a formal testimony. I presume the prosecution has no objection. None whatsoever, my lord. You'll have objections soon when I figure out the truth and find out that you're WRONG! Good, then you will give your account of events on the night in question to the court now. <laughs> yes, my lord! But wouldn't it be- it wouldn't be Gregson who was the first on the scene, it would be Garada, because Garada was like, Hey, Natsume, break down his door. It was around 9 o'clock that evening when I visited my neighbor and I took some tea with me as a gift. We had a heated literary debate over a nice hot drink, after which I went back to my room at around 11. Ah, oh, my tea was completely harmless! He couldn't have locked a door behind me otherwise, could he? Reckoning takes some time to have an effect on the body. People don't kill over immediately after taking it. The victim would have been perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The argument still stands. Hmm, yes, I see. It all seems relatively straightforward. Excuse me, but that testimony does raise one rather crucial point, I think. Mr. Natsume claims his tea has uh, to have been harmless. Presumably, though, the teacups have been examined for traces of the poison, haven't they? Why didn't I think of that? Well, as it happens, no. We haven't been able to. Did I hear you correctly, Inspector? Scotland Yard has failed to examine the subs suspect substance. Isn't it because I took the teacups? How could you have overlooked something so important? Is that the first thing you should have done? My learned Nipponese friend is falsely incensed. The inspector said Scotland Yard was unable to examine the tea, not that it was overlooked. Unable? Why? Simple enough, there was none left, not a drop. Someone must have been very thirsty indeed. With current scientific techniques, it's not possible to test for poison under such circumstances. I couldn't talk. We only need a drop, but that one drop does actually have to exist, funnily enough. Hmm. A lack of examination notwithstanding. It appears nothing other than the tea passed the victim's lips on the night in question. It was the soap! He put something from the soap in the tea! I see. Thank you. The matter is clear. Cast your eyes over the jury, my learned friend. What? You can see it in their faces, I'm sure. The recognition of the accused's guilt. The client's fate is all but sealed. In mere moments from now, you will lose, and your compatriot will be damned for all- What does he- seriously, what does he have against Japanese people, racist prick? For all eternity. He's right. I feel all six of the jurors looking daggers at me. But I can't let them beat me down. I won't. Also for the defense, proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Pick three, my lord. Just gotta press everything. Oh. Mata! Were you and your neighbor good friends then? Ah, uh, no! We weren't friends, not at all, not at all! Never, ever! A simple no would have sufficed. Then, um, why did you decide to pay him a visit? Mr. Shamspear fancies himself as having great literary knowledge. As a fellow scholar of English literature, we find much to talk about together. Come now, no Nipponese could understand the finer points of English literature. I am going to strangle him. And on the night in question, that was the topic of conversation as well, I presume. It was the day of my last trial, which I, when I was acquitted, I just arrived back at my lodgings. When I ran into Mr. Shamspear outside on the street, that was at around 6 o'clock. We exchanged one or two pleasantries, but it soon turned into a heated discussion. He was on his way out at the time, though. I promised to visit his room at evening at 9 to continue our debate. But what did I have? But did I have ill intentions? 
No, not one, not two, not any, none at all. Never, ever. A simple no would have sufficed, I feel. Then tell the court what did happen when you visited the victim's room. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. A literary debate about Shakespeare's works, I think you said, didn't you? Shakespeare? Ah, a very worthy topic of conversation, I must say. Oh, yes, my lord. Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? It was a profoundly pleasurable parley. Romeo and Juliet, who was stronger? I'm going to regret asking this, but how did the debate go? Well, we both agreed that we would reach a conclusion more quickly via a reenactment. We battled it out. In a Greco-Roman style, naturally. What? Mr. Shamsbury had all sorts of costume in his room for such a contest. So when you say a reenactment, you mean you were actually in costume? He as Romeo, I as Juliet. And after a vigorous wild tussle, I as Juliet came out on top. A victory I'll cherish forever. I dare not imagine the terrible scene of carnage. The fact remains that it was you who prepared the tea and took it to the victim, correct? I boiled the water in my room and made a pot to take with me. To take with me. I heard that he was too poor to have tea himself, you see. It's true, there was no sign of any tea leaves in the man's room. I wanted to do something nice, to be friendly. So why is everyone looking at me with such suspicion? Because they racist! My tea was harmless, of course it was! And do you have any basis for that statement, witness? Because he's not a murderer. Yes, there was not a drop of tea left in the victim's room anywhere, was there? That's correct. Anyone would think the fellow I never had a pot of tea before. He must have licked it dry. Which is a pity, because one drop is all we would have needed to analyze it for poison. You say that you returned home to your room at 11 o'clock, Mr. Natsume? Yes, definitely. By heaven and earth, I swear it. Landlord was able to verify that, as it happens. He confirmed that the defendant went back to his room at 11 that night. And how's the landlord able to attest to this? He um, said it was the lamps, I believe. The lamps? Inspector? When the tenants return to their rooms and start using gas, the lamps in the other parts of the house flicker. Yes, Mr. Garadev seems to pay a lot of attention to the comings and goings of his tenants. There's only one key to Mr. Shamspear's room, I know that for certain. He must have locked the door himself, from inside his room. The victim has confirmed that to be the case, yes. Oh, I'm right! My tea was harmless, completely harmless. You take poison, you die! Everyone knows that. Not that simple, I'm afraid. Ugh, what do you mean? Wait a minute, do I have- I took the teacups. Shut up, stop talking. I took the teacups, does it- I didn't examine this, but does it have a drop left? Does it? Well, one is purple, one is green, they have... This would be the cup that Mr. Shamsuru was drinking from then. It's stained on the inside. Tea does that, I'm afraid, even green tea. Oh really, I've never noticed before. You never noticed? Well, I never leave it in a cup long enough to leave a mark. I like to gulp it down. Drink tea while it's hot. That's the Japanese way, isn't it? Oh dear, so many people seem to have the wrong idea about our culture. Most of them are Japanese. Oh! This has a ring. This doesn't. Is that significant in some way? This is the teacup from which Mr. Natsume was drinking. Yes, unlike the other one, the inside of the cup is completely clean. Suppose he must have drunk the contents before the tea had a chance to leave a mark. They always gulp it down, too. Sorry, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, if you just sip it little by little, it goes cold. Clearly, I shall have to instruct you in the proper way to take tea. Details of the pair of teacups have been updated. There's no ring tea on the inside of Mr. Natsume. What the- see, that's kind of thing. It's like, what is that puddle on the floor? Mm, envelope has nothing. Cheap bar of soap. I'm in this divot. Oh! 
What is it, Mr. Naruhodo? This bar of soap. When we first found it, I could have sworn. There was some sort of round disc in the depression here. A reddish one. Yes, you're right. I remember it too. But now, the depression is completely empty. Where could the disc have gone? It... Little reddish medallion from the center has mysteriously vanished, so it might have melted into the soap? Yeah, I don't think we need any of the... Yeah. Okay, so we just press again. How long does it take for the symptoms to appear, then? According to the coroner I was speaking to at the yard, about 30 minutes after the poison was consumed. And the victim suffers a violent con convulsions, cramping and stiffness, and eventually dies from asphyxiation. But there's a 30 minute interval between when the poison is ingested and the onset of symptoms. There seem to be a lot of different types of poison in the world, that's for sure. Oh dear, death by poisoning again. It's always so awful. 30 minutes is a long time. But didn't Garadup say that um, his tenant came back super late at night? And if this takes only 30 minutes to activate, and Natsuma says he was back in his room by 9, then he wasn't poisoned. He didn't feel the effects of the poison, because he went out. Certainly long enough for the victim to have locked the door be behind the accused after he left. Can't deny that. It further degrades Soseki-san's alibi. I have, a medicinal, I have a medical report from the doctor who examined the victim here, my lord. It spells it out, really. The accused is the only person who could have done it. Very well, the court will add this report to the court re record as evidence. Victims, blah, 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 blah. Oh yes, I see it here. Delayed onset of symptoms. I'm going to read it for myself. Uh, 31. Cause of coma. Ingestion of a small quantity of strychnine. Toxic events present 30 minutes after ingestion. High likelihood of the substance having been mixed with the tea the victim was drinking, but no sample could be obtained for testing. In just investigative conclusions, the poisoning in incident occurred at around 1.30 a.m. on 21st February, assessed from the victim's pocket watch that appears to have broken when the man collapsed after delayed onset of symptoms. No container for the poison was found at the scene. Okay, so because the teacup that Sham Spear was drinking out of had a ring, that means he didn't drink the <coughs> ooh, the tea until until 1.30 when he came back from outside. Hmm. I thought the teacups would help me, but it doesn't. Crack. Great! The argument still stands, you say. This is what Mr. Natsume has been saying, isn't it? A pair of them drank tea together that night, so if there was poison in it, I think they would not have been able to dock the door after the accused left later on. Exactly! Ah, Me and my tear, innocent! Sweet and innocent, I tell you! I'm afraid so, that doesn't follow. You see, strychnine is a slow acting poison. In other words, it takes time for the symptoms to appear. But you could have left the room up to 30 minutes after the victim drank the tea. As long as you did that, Mr. Shamspear could have locked the door after you'd gone. But, but no! We drank tea straight away! The battle over whether Romeo or Juliet was stronger, that came after the tea. Do you have any evidence to support that statement? In my great homeland, the Empire of Japan, we have a saying. Drink tea while it's hot! Sure, a proverb will satisfy the prosecution. I'm afraid there's no conclusive proof to support the def defendant's assertion. On the contrary, there are sufficient grounds to infer his guilt in the matter. No. Hmm, that's the extent of their testimony, is it? If I could voice a personal opinion, Mr. Nanaholo. Of course, go ahead. Mr. Natsume is arguing for his innocence so adamantly and so persistently. Yet Inspector Gretzen just brushes what he says aside. It's really quite infuriating. I agree. So we need to find an inconsistency in what the inspector is saying, I think. Afraid so, as things stand, the jurors are sure to find Mr. Natsume guilty. 
As I see it, what we need to focus on is the poison and the tea. Let's listen carefully to this testimony again. Yes! Mm. Uh, took some tea with me, I give. He did literary debate at around 11. My tea was completely harmless. He couldn't have locked the door behind me otherwise. Uh, perfectly able to lock the door after his guest left. The arguments dance. We don't have any um, statements from Garrett that we could present. I don't think we can present... Yeah, we can't present people. See street map. I think the soap doesn't come into play yet because we have not talked about soap at all. This envelope... Nothing. It. This proves that Champ's beer left the tea out to drink later, but the fact still stands, he drank the tea. Photographic print, um, hmm. Go, oh, time to go to a walkthrough! Victim's medical report. Present the victim's medical report on statement two or five. Peanut butter toast got milk. <laughs> Hello, hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Monday. Statement two or five. Okay, I will press it. I will present it. Yigiari! The argument still stands, you say. I think not, Inspector. Come again? I think you'll find that you've overlooked a very significant chronological inconsistency here. A chrono what? What are you on about? According to this report, the victim must have consumed the poison at around 1.30 in the morning. And yet, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, left the victim's room at 11. Oh. Yes, that's right. There's more than two hours of missing time there. <laughs> in other words, if there was poison in the tea that Mr. Natsume brought to the victim's room... Oh! Shamspear might not even be aware... Oh! Okay, so maybe he said that Natsume poisoned him because he drank the tea. And he was like, the only person that brought the tea was Natsume. But in the two hours that he wasn't in the room, because Shamspear left, someone else could have come in and poisoned the tea. Mm, that's mm, So he's not purposefully trying to frame Natsume. He's just like, I unknowingly drank tea. It still stands. That it's the tea that was poisoned. There's poison in the tea that Mr. Natsume brought to the victim's room. How could the victim have fallen ill to it two and a half hour, full hours after the defendant left? Ooh, <laughs> they both went... <coughs> oh, excuse me. The defense's argument is entirely reasonable. How do you respond, Lord Von Zix? He didn't have to drink it then. Yes, I know, I know. Pray forgive the discourtesy if my mind has wandered. No, I will not forgive you. I was considering what cuisine would best complement the contents of my hollowed chalice this luncheon. Get off your high horse. How could it have happened, you ask? I do hate to shatter illusions, but my Nipponese friend appears to be chasing a phantom idea. A phantom? Is it so hard to imagine that the victim drank his tea after the accused had left? For example, at the time stated in the medical report. Yes, at around half past one. <laughs> Mr. Natsume brought the tea with him to drink together with his neighbor. And in Japan, there is a well-known saying. Drink tea while it's hot! <laughs> and in my country, there is an even more apt saying. There is nothing more refreshing than cold tea. The, the point is, if there was such a long gap, there may be other ways to explain how the victim came to be poisoned. Other possibilities. What sort of possibilities, Council? 
Well, for example, the man could have had another visitor. Another visitor? Duh. That's a very bold assertion, my learned friend. From someone who has nothing to substantiate it. Or, or, the victim could have taken poison of his own volition. You suggest this man has been a suicide counsel. <laughs> Mr. Shamspear has categorically denied suicide. The idea can and must be discounted. <laughs> but, but he could be lying. You gonna talk? Is something wrong, Lord Van Zix? I was listening to the sound of the carriage pulling up outside the courtroom. Hey, forgive the discourtesy. Carriage? What carriage? It would seem that the key player in this case has just arrived. Hold it! Oh, oh, brief candle. Oh, is it Shakespeare? Life's but a walking shadow. Yep. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Oh, you're gross. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Yesterday in my game, I gave mushroom to my wife as a gift to get uh, her heart full, and she said, Yuck, why would you give me this? I'm like, really? Yes! Yes! Mushrooms are gross! Mushrooms are gross! Google how to get a divorce in Stardew. Because <laughs> mushrooms are gross. Mushrooms are gross. Who, sir, are you? William Shakespeare, my lord. Alas, twas I, undone by these bitter offense. I am the victim. What? What's he doing here? The prosecution seeks to call this gentleman to the stand. With his testimony, my learned friend's futile resistance will be utterly crushed. Calling him as a witness? Bit of old counsel, I grant your request with interest. I'm curious to discover what the court shall hear from the victim himself. Happy am I, Shamspear, to regale thee with my tale of woe, my lord. But I still have my own tale to tell, my own tale of worse woe. I can regale the court with the tale of my perfect innocence, in perfect English! That will do, Mr. Nottomir. Let the court now hear from the victim. Ew, you're gross. Ew. Who the freak are you- why are you here? Alright, so that's Mr. Shamspear. But who's that other man beside him? Yes, I think... I feel sure that we've caught a glimpse of that man before. State your names on occupations for the court, please, witnesses. A writer of words so sweet, they do scent the breeze. An inventor of ideas so profound, they compose the earth. The unrivaled poet, the unmatched scribe, William Shakespeare. For the great bar to be recalled to life anew, lo, what a magnificent man. Good fellows, I am he who ponders such a miracle, William Shakespeare. Medarin? Oh, um, the name is Medarin. Hadron B. Medarin. Hadron B. Medarin. Hadron B. Medarin. Ah, what for the Altamont? Yes, company. East End Branch Office. You like cave and my mushroom grow there. How could she not like them? I object to who made the character likes and dislikes. Because mushrooms are gross! I need to give him a different voice. He sounds too similar to other characters. Ah, I remember now. It was yesterday on Briar Road. Oh, yes. She's right. It's him. Ah, what's this? What's that man do 
you come here? You know, I was trying to see into Suzuka's own window. What if she was lost in the cave and had nothing else to eat? Um, starve. <laughs> Something wrong, Mr. Now, but oh, um, excuse me, come in, Lord. Oh gosh, his his head wobbles too much. It's kind of gross. I don't like him. No. Yes, we spotted him outside Mr. Garadup's house that morning. He's a gas company employee. What does he have to do with this case? Sir, Mr. William Shamspear, you are the victim in this miserable affair, correct? Oh heaven, oh hell, do you command me to remember? That sweet poison that just crossed me and crossed my innocent lips. I subpoenaed him for the trial, with his doctor's permission, naturally. Hearing the testimony of the aggrieved will remove any room for doubt of the jurors' minds, I'm sure. Behold, you have only a r to rearrange the letters of my name to see that me is a seraph, an angel indeed. Thus be I a noble of mind, sweet nature and verily honest of heart, as all heavenly angels be. Because there isn't a less contrived meaning in your name. No, not at all. The jurors seem to be very moved by this man, I'm afraid. They're actually taking the Seraph anagram idea seriously? Thank you, witnesses, for your illuminating introductions. But my lord, what's the man next to Mr. Shamsbeard doing here? The gas man, I mean. Um, what? Me? Well, now. Allow me to enlighten my learned friend. You recall, I presume, your earlier impertinence. When you suggested that the victim had another visitor to his room on the night in question. And moreover, that the victim is a compulsive liar. What? No, I didn't quite say that. This young chintroker here is to controvert your wild claims conclusively. Is that not so, Mr. Mitterman? Uh, hang on, no. I'm just here. I hereby call for your formal testimonies. You will tell the court as lucidly as possible what happened on the night in question. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Yes, it doth pain me, but let the truth be spoken. The truth of that wintry night of my discontent. Now is the hour of my malcontent. Hmm. Rose, please stop. Ah. Okay, at first I... Man, at first I thought that Shamspear was purposefully framing Natsume, and then I was like, oh no, maybe it's an accident, and now I think he's back to framing Natsume. He's hiding something. The snow lay about. My neighbor did cometh in the evening, bearing a gift of tea. But marry, bitter was each bitter was his drink, and when left, I did feel prostrate on my, ta my table. Twas the tea alone did pass my lips that late hour, not else. If it was so bitter, why did you leave it for so long? I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, keeping an eye on his room. No one else visited his room but that short little round back Eastern fellow. That's racist. Wait, what did you say? You were keeping an eye on Mr. Shamspear's room all night? That's right. Of course, the bloke's window is all but blocked up, isn't it? There's a little gap in the bricks where you can see into the room. I spent the night trying to keep my teeth from chattering as I peered in through that. Why would you do that? The question is, sir, why? Ew, you're gross, stop! Ah, well now, that's because he's on my list. What piece of work is a man? Wherefore wouldst thou sh not stare in wonderment? What are you talking about? This buzzing busybody hath not part in this play. I pray thee, pray, pay him no heed. Make no more ado about his tedious words. What'd you say about me? Calm yourself. This court is concerned with what happened on the night in question. Nothing more. Indeed, that is so. And, as the testimony we have just heard clearly reveals, there was no one other than the accused present at the time who could have carried out his crime. Well, I believe this may be the final testimony of the trial. 
Now, counsel, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Oh, I don't want to look at your stupid fa I don't want to look at any of their stupid faces. Then whatever, press everything. Mata! To be clear, by neighbor, you are referring to the defendant, Mr. Natsume? And indeed, sire. Perchance thou would sc that I call him the man from upstairs. And at what time did the mustached Nipponese visit you in your room? Our meeting was promised for the hour of nine, and lo, did he come to tend a gift of fragrant tea. Details which are in accordance with the defendant's own testimony, yes. And we were broiled in such a literary debate as history hath not seen before. By which I presume he means... A discussion about who was stronger, Romeo or Juliet. I, Shamspeare, did play the part of young Romeo, whilst my neighbour played the fair Juliet. Each of us dressed as our... as would our characters be, to bring weight upon our merry experiments. I dare not imagine the scene. Frailty, thy name is woman. Canst thou imagine how dismayed I was, as I have heard of the Eastern art of jiu-jitsu, but... Never did I dream it would be a skill practiced by the comely maiden. Juliet beat Romeo up? This is not helping our case. I believe the court has heard enough about your earth-shattering literary debate. Perhaps you could reiterate your statement about the tea that the ghost brought to your room. My liege, I am thy servant. Gladly I would do thy bidding. Shut up! Mata! You know the actor, he kind of looks like the person in the picture at the beginning of the case, at least to me. I think... Hmm. Maybe that's a purposeful thing to be like, hey, it was about this dude. He's... I, th I feel like he's shady. He's hiding something. Maybe the eyes? Maybe. Let me stop you there. Mr. Natsume left your room at 11 o'clock, but it wasn't until after 2 that the poison made you collapse. That amounts to more than 3 hours of missing time. <laughs> if the defendant had really put the poison into your tea, that 3 hour window of time is something you're going to have to explain. Gladly, tis an easy task. What? I did drink of the tea not while my guest did strari, but after he took leave of me. Faith, twas stone cold, but at one hour past post midnight, verily were my lips parched. That doesn't sound normal. Nay, tis quite ordinary, sire. After all, thou wouldst recall a fiery debate, and miss such argument, there'd be no time for fiery tea. Romeo and Juliet again. And who was stronger? Mr. Shamspear, in summary, allow me to confirm. Did you not come here with the intention of naming your attacker? But of course, my liege. T'was a stooped lover of words did attempt to shuffle me off this mortal coil. <gasps> Y'all know what that means. Mata! So, you didn't have any kind of evening meal? Dinner? Supper? Why would you hold a fork in your hand, then? Huh. Fee on luxury, fee on gluttony. To eat thrice daily is but a waste of time. He's doing my workout. I mean, no, I didn't work out like that. I mean, I feel that's a good arm workout. You keep your arms up, you're shaking your hips. I mean, you're moving your torso, the top half of your body, a lot, so... Oh, my shoulders are... Ow! Oh, my shoulders are weak. I need to... I need to stretch more. Sorry? I would that my belly were full. No more off than the sun doth rise. What the freak is he doing here? What is this? What? Well, most heroic eating habits, I must say. Night and day do I fill my hours with learned study of the great bard and playwright. Hence is that there doth not in my chamber... What? Hence is it that there doth not in my chamber be in the costumes of mine art. That would appear to be the case. What the heck did he say? As even the rodent was found starved to death in your room. Now I think of it, it's not just food that was conspicuously missing from that room, is it? I don't recall seeing a single play or script anywhere. Would I? I devoured them all. You've eaten them? 
Every word be within my skull. Didst thou imagine otherwise? Right, that wasn't misleading at all. Now, could you turn around, do you think? Which brings us to the conclusion that the only way the poison could have passed the victim's lips is in the tea. Uh, I was gonna say the broke red power. But the windows of the house have all been filled in. Historical artifact of the now defunct window tax. Yeah, you're right there. All bricked up horribly. But well, as it happens, there's a little part of the brickwork at the bottom corner that's been opened up. I was looking in through that gap. Yes, there were a few bricks loose, weren't there? And for some strange reason, a couple bars of soap lined up on the ledge outside as well. I don't like going around poking my chin in other people's business, especially on freezing cold nights. Them's my orders, so that's what I'll keep doing. As long as there's bread in my body. Whose orders? And why particularly him? What's with all the theatricals today? Out of interest, Mr. Mitterman. After the accused had left and returned to his own lodging, did you see the victim leave the room at all? No, he never did. He was left in that room the whole time, as far as I'm concerned. And we can therefore discount the possibility of suicide. How can you be sure of that? The police carried out a thorough investigation of the scene and found no receptacle for the poison. And since we know the victim didn't leave his room, and hence didn't dispose of the poison's container himself, it's clear that this was no attempted suicide. Only the culprit could have removed the receptacle. Ah, oh, yes. Lucidly explained, counsel. Thank you. It really was. You can't argue with the logic. I need to know about who ordered him to what stand watch at his house. You say a short little round-backed eastern fella, so you can't be sure it was the defendant then. How many other short little round-backed Nipponese with a mustache do you think there are in London? Well, of course, it's only a narrow gap and it was quite dark, so I didn't notice the mustache. But he showed up at around 9, so I'm pretty sure of himself. Hey Maka, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Monday! And when the person you saw arrived, did he and Mr. Shamspear drink tea together? Huh, sorry, couldn't say. Why not? Pause. Don't seem to room all that well, could I? What I did see was the silhouette of that little roundback fella wearing a pretty dress. And the pair of them started some kind of wrestling match. I tell you, I didn't know what to make of it. <sighs> what up, I'm here. Hey, Rico, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Monday! I suppose... That was the Romeo and Juliet Championship battle getting underway. Mr. Mitherman, allow me to confirm one final time. Apart from the accused, can you state with certainty that no one else visited the victim on the night in question? Ew, stop wobbling your chin, it's disgusting! No question, Gasman's honor! Hold it. My lord! Goodness me! Yes, Mr. Foreman? I've kept my mouth shut and listened up to now, but this has gone long enough! Are you all with me? Yes! Are we to understand that you ladies and gentlemen of the jury are in agreement with one another? No! I still have to find out why he was looking into the room! That you reached a unanimous decision! To right we have! Are you all with me? Yes! Wait, no! The defense is in the middle of a cross-examination! To be honest, I was holding out a bit of hope for you, young man. Especially after you identified those few hours that followed the accused leaving the victim's room. Yes, the three missing hours, as you put it. But in the end, what difference do they make? Not as far as I can see. And since thou art that's apparent, there's really no reason to delay our decision any longer. Like I was saying before, if I don't take Five Bob home with me tonight, the missus will blow her top. Don't worry, his uncle Popeye will have a word with him. Ah, he does look like Popeye! Hmm, what's that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. 
<clears throat> Pretty well, let the court be appraised of your decisions. Appraised, whoops. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leadings as to the defendant's culpability. Yuzai! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, now I will have my time to do whatever, whatever. All of you. Oh, it will appear that the jury is indeed unanimous. So, this time at least, it seems justice will be done. All's well that ends well, as they say. This calls for a toast, I feel. To the guilty being punished. Uh. Whoa! Oh, he looks like a bee! Adron B. Adron B. A drone B? A drone B. Meter man. So he's working for a queen bee then. <gasps> Get him, Mr. Naruhoto, please. Trial isn't over yet. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Sato? What about the information I found in this encyclopedia of British law I have? I said information weird. An obscure right that belongs to defense in these situations, remember? Yeah, you just did it two days ago. How did you forget? A summation examination! Yes, that's right. We don't have a jury. But in Kramer's court, a lot we can reverse the decision of jurors. We can force the trial to continue. This trial can't end now. Whatever it takes, I just can't let that happen. The defense moves to invoke its right to a summation examination, my lord. Throw it in fire. Why am I not surprised at my learned Nibonese friend's inability to de de defeat? You choose to cling desperately to some archaic rule you barely comprehend instead of accepting the truth. How many times have I done a summation examination and it turns out I'm right? So shut your face. Gosh. Certainly no other defense counsel in recent times has exercised their right to a summation examination. Because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. I've altered it before, so shut your face. Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. This court will proceed with a summation examination as outlined in the Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Are you and your fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we all know this young lad's tenacity. And we're ready for it. Very well. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime for which he stands accused. The victim may not be well off, but he's a noble man and straight up. There's no reason to doubt the man. Not a noble man. What? Well, I do declare the good gentleman has no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just look at the accused by comparison. He's Japanese, stooped all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. So freaking racist. There's no evidence to suggest the gangling actor is a fraudsman. Oh, now at least. Then why, if you're saying there's no proof that, the, but, then why, Mwah. oh, I really don't care, like, I just need to try to end quickly. Three hours of missing time is nothing when you reach my age, you know, nothing at all. You're like kindergartners, give them finger paint and they're on your side again. For real, it's like, oh, you want a cookie, huh? Say not guilty. And they're like, oh, I changed my mind. They're stupid. What happened? Um... Uh, basically, I got the guilty verdict, and now I have to change their minds. They'd be like, hey, let's let the trial continue. I knew it. Every single one of them seems completely convinced. It would seem that all the jurors have come to the conclusion that Mr. Shamsbeard is a fine, upstanding, and honest citizen. If you ask me, they've all been bewitched by his strange theatrical movements. And sadly, nothing Mr. Natsuma has said appears to have registered at all. 
Well, here goes. Let's not forget. I've pleaded with the jury on Soseki-san's behalf before, and it worked. You never know! Before we begin, it might be an idea for me to remind you exactly how a summation examination works, Mr. Nadohodo. Oh. Well, you're still very new to British law, after all. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. Ah, ba 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 Uh, no need. I know how to do it. Thank you for the kind offer, Mr. Sato. But I've been through plenty of these summation examinations already now. I think it's important that we don't delay to start any longer than necessary. Of course, I understand, and I'm quite sure you're right. If you're confused by anything at any point, you can turn to me for advice whenever you'd like. I'll be here for you. The key to this is really listening carefully to each juror's statement. Finding two that are contradictory and pitting the corresponding jurors against each other. Without further ado, please, counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Oh, I wanna punch his face. Look at the douche on the left. Defense's rebuttal. Not be well off, but he's a nobleman and straight up, there's no reason to doubt the man. Uh, he has no reason to lie. I think he's rather splendid, so there, don't pit them together. Look at the accused by comparison, so he's basically saying yeah. There's no evidence to suggest that the gangling actor is a frostman for now at least. Mm. He doesn't care, and he doesn't care. It would be funny to change the costumes and have her wear her lawyer suit. <gasps> that would be cool. Oh wait! I can change their costumes! I should do it. Okay, I guess I'll just start guessing. Because none of them really seem to contradict each other. Well, there are plenty of people in London who seem noble but poor. Couldn't some of them also be liars? I've no doubt about it. Like that shaky client of yours, for example. Absolutely not! Mr. Natsume is no liar! Look, the point is, the only thing that passed the victim's lips that night was the Japanese man's tea. When you take the gasman's testimony into account as well, the truth couldn't be any clearer. Ah, well, that's alarmingly logical. But let me be frank here. I'm a gentleman, with a gentleman's values. That's why you gamble. Hmm. If it turns out that the old Shakespearean chum is a rotten liar after all, I'd gladly change my decision about the defendant. And I'm sure my fellow gentlemen on the jury would do the same. Isn't that right? Well, um, yes, perhaps. I don't see it happening. Eh, hey, what's that? Elderly gent on the end here, you know. You'll have to speak up. Look, I don't really care about all this nonsense. I just need this trial to be over. How many gentlemen do we actually have on the jury, then? One more on sale? I have too many games, dude. I don't have time to play them all. Alright, sir, I may hold you to that. Don't forget what you said. Uh, if you can show me that the victim's a liar, I'll reconsider my position. Oh, so he changed his statement. Okay, well, I'll just keep pressing. Are you saying you believe the man to be trustworthy because he's rather splendid? No, that's not what I said. The point is, the man is the victim here. What reason would he have to lie? And yes, he is rather splendid. So you say, yet again. Meanwhile, the man who stands accused behaves so suspiciously, it's exhausting to look at him. I'm afraid he's not splendid at all. Splendid logic there, madam. Thank you so much. Okay, so she contributed nothing. Yeah, her, cha her statement didn't change. No, no, no. Not one of those things is a reason to find the man guilty. But he is fishy. There's no point dancing around the fact. He's Japanese, he has a mustache, and he stoops. These guys are so racist. This is so terrible. You see, you arrive at the conclusion in just three steps. Three steps, like waltz, in fact. You know, the more I think about it, the more this trial seems like a dance. You seem to be several steps ahead of yourself, though, and you're on the wrong foot. No, there's nothing but circumstantial evidence here. There's no actual proof of the defendant's guilt. But the victim's version of events is backed up by what the big chin man next to him says, isn't it? One, he saw the Japanese man there. Two, he saw no one else. And three, he saw the Japanese man there. Oh. 
That's another three steps. All this really does seem more and more like a waltz, doesn't it? Right, and the prosecution will waltz its way to victory if I let you speak much more. A fraudsman? What do you mean by that, madam? It really is a most tiresome problem for the company. Most irritating. You can be absolutely certain that a customer is stealing from us, but without hard evidence. We can't even threaten to take action for fear of being sued. <gasps> is... Is Shamspear stealing gas and trying to sell it in the bars of soap? Because there's a puddle. There's a puddle under the gas thing. And if he puts it in the soap outside, presumably the gas will stay in solid form. Because the gas, it would have to be the bar of soap did it here. But when we took the bar of soap, the, the red circle disappeared. So is she trying to kill him? Can't even threaten to take action for fear of being sued. I'm sorry, you've lost me love there. Who are you? I'm the wife of Augustus Altamont, the owner of the Altamont Gas Company. Good gracious, Altamont Gas, you say? Gas is the future of energy in this country and around the globe, but proper handling is essential. As I'm sure our employee from East End branch office would be the first to agree. Absolutely, Lady Quimby. Gotta be used properly. Ultimate gas is the best in the world, of course. Her, she's the Queen Bee. <sighs> I think we may have solved the mystery of the bow from earlier. Bow from earlier, Mr. Nadohoro. Right, he bowed in deference to his employer's wife, did he? Ah, so would I be right in assuming that the reason Mr. Meterman was watching what Mr. Shampoo was up to in his room? I'm afraid that there's no one to the length the population of the East End would go to in order to steal our gas. So I really have no choice when the company identifies somebody as a possible fraudsman. But to dispatch a worker to have watched the suspect day and night, we are very thorough in our investigations. So you mean Mr. Shamspear is a sham? I wouldn't come out and say it in public, but you can finish that sentence with a grubby little gas thief. You have noticed the public gallery in here, have you? The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Faith, wouldst thou wound me with thy words, were I to let them penetrate the skin? Always judge outward appearance. Sham, wow! <gasps> but there is here not insults, only choirs of angels in song. We may not have evidence yet, but my workers won't stop buzzing around with you until they find it. And when they do, you'll find yourself blasted back to your angelic heights in Ultimate gas explosion. Mr. Shamsbury has been stealing gas. I wonder, juror number four, if you wouldn't mind adding that information to your statement. My pleasure. Was it a bit about ripping that thief apart you enjoyed? A little before the part about abject violence, if it's not too much trouble. Yes, of course. This could be it. This could shift the balance. It's time to tip the scales. Wait, she suspects him, but she thinks he's trustworthy. No, she's not the one who thinks he's trustworthy. She was just like, oh, there's nothing that actually proves that he's innocent for now. Okay, so I'm going to put... Victims put on a fine performance, but in reality, he's common thief of my company's gas. So basically... Then... If you can show me that the victims are like Because these two are the ones that changed their statements. So... Pit. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Oh, she didn't mix it up! Uh, to whose statements do you refer, counsel? But the music stops, so I have to be right. Juror number one. Uh, what are you yelling about, lad? I presume you've heard juror number four's statement, made by the wife of the owner of Altamont's gas. Well, yes. The victim, who you claim to be a noble, straight-up man. 
in fact, turns out to be a common thief. So the good lady says, but there's no evidence, is there? You and I both heard them say as much. It's true, we don't have any evidence as such, just yet. But the claims aren't baseless, you know. What? You heard me. Seeing as his operation has already been compromised. I would suggest that the court hears testimony from our East End branch officer employee over there. I'll do whatever you say, milady. Gasman's honor. Juror number one. You say you're a man of your word. I'm a man of my word. If I could show that Mr. Shamsir was a liar, you assured me that you would reconsider your decision about the defendant's guilt. Hmm. Yes, I did say that. As a man of my honor, I'll hold to it. As I'm sure the elder gentleman Why? Well, I missed it. Whatever. Me? Oh, well, yes. Now that we found out the man's a liar, perhaps we ought to consider the matter further. Well, if I'm perfectly honest, I haven't heard half of what you've all been saying. If this means you'll rake up a few points, that would suit me to the ground. Down to the ground. Oh no, I'm not having any part of this. I want this trial to be over and done with. In that case, I shall change my leaning. So, Mr. William Shamspear, if that is your real name, we as a jury demand to know what exactly kind of a man you really are. Exactly what kind of a man you really are. Wow, I can speak. I can read. Haha! -ha! That's four jurors! Four for not guilty! Yes, Mr. Nadahoro? Victory! Well done! Well, this is quite extraordinary, I must say. As a result of the defense's summation examination, the jury's leaning has changed. Now only two jurors say guilty, whilst four say not guilty. I therefore declare this court to be in a state of disaccord. And order the trial to continue. Aha, uh -huh, in your face, Van Ziegs. Throw it into the fire. Crush your cup. Haha, <laughs> you it. You have spoiled the bouquet, Mr. Shamspear. Punch his face! The ladies and gentlemen of the jury now find they are unable to trust you, the victim. But you gods will give us some faults to make us men. So God mend me, I do swear. Shut up. This gas man speaketh that which concerns him most, not but gas, not but thin air. Ay, it burneth bright a while, but it hath no substance, and it doth rig foul. Oi, what'd you say? Do I take it, Mr. Shamsphere, that you deny the allegations of gas thievery? Most heartily, my lord, hast thou forgot? I am as a seraph, an angel, noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart. I am Someone smash his face, please. Wonder how much juries are paid back then because they keep coming back. I don't think they're paid at all because um, juror number five keeps saying, like, I have to earn money to bring back, so they were paid. Ah, you flowery mouth pompous beanpole, just because I haven't gotten the evidence yet. Mr. Shamspear, if, in fact, you are not noble of mind, sweet of nature, or honest of heart, if you are a liar, then your testimony should have no sway in this courtroom. It is my considered opinion that at the present time, no other possible culprit of this crime has been identified. All testimony heard by the court thus far heavily impl implicates the defendant. In short, it would not be unreasonable at this stage for me to rule on the case. Oh no! However, in light of the fact that the jury has expressed concern about the fidelity of this witness, I believe it would be inappropriate for this court not to pursue the point further. Shut up! Shut up! No one cares about you! I assure you, my lord, that would be a waste of the court's time. The gas and this case are unrelated. Juror number four. Yes. Didn't you say before that although you had no hard evidence to prove this man had been stealing gas, 
You have strong grounds for suspecting him. That's right, we do. Don't we, hmm, worker? Absolutely, Lady Quimby. Catman's honor. Very well, then. We will hear your testimony now. You will tell the court precisely why you believe the victim, Mr. William Shamsbeer, has been stealing gas. Yes, my lord. It'll be my pleasure. On the Altamont gas name, I swear. If I may, my lord. Go ahead, madam. This worker's testimony may have a significant bearing on the good name of my husband's company. Therefore, I should like to take the stand alongside him in a supervisory role, if you wouldn't mind. Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Sweet as honey! Yeah, 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 yeah! Whoa, whoa. Very well. As an exception, I shall honor your request. Thank you, my lord. You wait till the boss gives you an earful. Oh, it's gonna sting you. Mock my words. So, you will both testify before the court. On the subject of the illegal consumption of the Altamont Gas Company's fuel. Yes, is that clear, my good man? Here is Altamont Gas, my lady. Which is the clearest in the world? I was going to say, what the heck does the gas... Really, what does the gas have to do with this case? But, if this proves that Shamsbeer is a liar, then we can't trust his words, and so that'll help our case. Do you think the gas has gone to his head, Mr. Sato? I think the man is just a very dedicated employee, Mr. Naruhoro. Um, I'm proud to be the company's East End branch investigator and meter money collection agent. Ultimat gas meters accept thruppany bits, each coin given company about cu customers that two hours of gorgeous gas. And yet, the meter in Mr. Shamsbeer's room didn't have a single coin in it. The meter doesn't appear to have been tampered with, though, and the collection agency collection agent has the only key. Somehow, he's using all the flaming gas he wants without paying a penny. If that's not thieving, what is? Oh, very short. Pray forgive the discourtesy. The irrelevance of this testimony caused me to turn my... Turn to my hollowed chalice. Shut your mouth, then. What do you mean by that remark, Lord Van Zeex? Did the mustachioed Nipponese poison the gangling excuse for an actor, or didn't he? That is all that should concern this court. And yet, now we must listen to this abhorrence. Clearly, what separates the vast British Empire and your eastern island nation is more than geographical distance. But, but this could turn out to be crucial testimony. The cross-examination must go ahead. <laughs> Do what you will. Lord Van Zeex appears to be in a violent mood. Yes, he does. An attempted poisoning and an incidence of gas thief with no supporting evidence. It's true that they would appear completely unrelated at first glance. But I wonder, the truth tends to be buried in the most unusual places. And the first step in uncovering it is, will be to establish just who and what this man really is. Exactly! So does that mean you enter people's houses in order to empty their gas meters? That I do. How many glasses has this Frobo? <laughs> I have no idea! It's just like, also like, where do you keep all the glasses? How do you carry all the glasses here? Just like, what's wrong with you, man? Van Zeex is so weird. I have to try to catch people when they're in. Then I ask permission to come inside and do my business. Does that mean you've been into Mr. Natsume's room before as well? As well as that of Mr. Shamspear? Well now, interesting you should bring that up. I couldn't believe how little money was in this meter. I mean, how the pair of them survived the winter is beyond me, it really is. Knowing Mr. Natsume, he probably spends all his gas money on books. And then when he's finished reading them, he probably burns them for warmth. Oh! You kindly reiterate your statement about the gas meters themselves, Mr. Midman. Not much to say, really, but as you wish. Do they get thruppins. 
So all London houses ha that have a gas supply are fitted with these gas meters, are they? The latest model, the height of technology, developed by our company, Altamont Gas. And anyone who uses our gas will have one of these meters in the property, yes. So if a three pence coin gives two hours of gas, most people use about three coins in a night. A bit more than that, usually, if they have both gas lights and a gas stove, that is. Both glasses don't look cheap. Mm -hmm. Uh, Van Zeek is probably super rich and so he doesn't care about breaking the glasses because he's just like, I can buy more because I'm rich. <laughs> Slap his face. Thinking about it, sosuke -san doesn't have a fireplace in that room of his, does he? Some people still choose to use candles, of course, and only have gas for heating. Ah oh, yes, I do remember seeing candles in Mr. Natsume's room, actually. And how does the money in the meter get back to you at the gas company? Every three days, gasmen like me visit properties on the gas supply and empty the meters of coins. I must say, the design and manufacture of the new meter cost the company an awful lot of money. But happily, it did put a stop to people not paying their dues, for the most part. Ah, because they have to pay in advance, you mean? Yes, exactly right. Meter Mr. Moon didn't have a single coin in it. Out of interest, how long has this been going on? Weeks and weeks! He's been pinching gas off of for ages! And you've examined the meter in Mr. Shamsbury's room, I take it. Naturally, we took it off the wall and went over it with a fine tooth comb. And found nothing suspicious at all, I presume. No, I'm afraid we didn't. Which is exactly why I demanded a new type of meter to be produced. One with an indestructible lock. The Shamspear Special. That sounds like it would have cost an awful lot of three penny pieces. But even after all that, the rascal's meter was still empty. I'll never forget the humiliation. When I opened up the money box and found it there. You what? I said, you what? And a look on his face. That smarmy smile of his. Ah... Uh. I pulled the meter straight off the wall and took it back to the office. But you know what? Nothing. Not a trace of it being jemmied open anywhere. Not a single sign. And what's happening to my salary as a result? Down by three shillings a day, that's what. Life-threatening situation in a number of ways. Incidentally, what became of that meter? Nothing became of it. I've still got it. Oh. Right here. No wonder they call you Meterman. Hmm, I think it would be prudent for the court to sequester this item while the trial is ongoing. Gas meter has been entered into the court record. Definitely. Gotta look at it. Examine. That's a very sturdy looking padlock, isn't it? And the money box is sealed with bees axe, too. If Mr. Sholmes were to get up to any mischief, he'd be found out immediately. Mr. Naruhoro, mischief of that kind is not the sort of thing that Mr. Sholmes would... Yes, he would. You know, you didn't finish that sentence, though, you? Well, anyway. It's understandable that the gas company would want to safeguard the money that's rightfully theirs. But it does feel a little over the top, perhaps, doesn't it? Oh hey, what's this? You what you what are you guys doing? What are you saying it wasn't tampered with? Oh, what's have you spotted something, Mr. Nadahoro? Just here. There's a little hole. Don't do you see? Goodness, you're right. I wouldn't have noticed. Not a very neat hole, is it? Not professionally made, I'd say. So you think it might have been opened up by Mr. Shamspear? Possibly. It seems the people at Altamont Gas must have missed it. Well, it certainly seems to go all the way through to the inside. Yes, but there's no way a coin could fit through there. That's true, but even so, it seems more than a little suspicious. How do you not notice the hole? Uh, that's all I'm supposed to look at. Oh, I can't get it back to the normal orientation. Ah! Okay, here we go, here we go. I could have made it. That's what she said joking like 10 times in the past two minutes. <gasps> really? Really? No! I missed it! How did I miss- That's what she said jokes! Opportunities! No! 
Although at first glance, there doesn't appear to be anything unusual about it. Let's move this along, shall we? Continue with your testimony. Though I would say it has as much value as the contents of that meter. Oof. How could you miss that whole... <laughs> That's what she said! Oh my gosh, yes! The meter doesn't appear to have been tampered with. Can I present this? I no need to press. It's been tampered with. Lady Altamont, I'm afraid to say... That this meter clearly does show signs of having been tampered with. What? Get away! I've been over and over that thing! I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with it! In that case... What do you have to say about the small hole that's been made at the base of the coin box? I'm afraid that your meter man is an idiot. Yeah, he is. Oh, what? You're right! You're quite right! There is a little hole there! The meters aren't supposed to have that. None of the others do! In other words, we can assume that Mr. Shamspear secretly opened up this hole himself. Yes, I wouldn't be at all surprised. But why? Yeah, why? I mean, it's tiny. You couldn't get a farthing through that. Lady Altamont, I wonder if you could give the court some more details about your meter design. What sort of details? Well, what I'd specifically like to know is... How it differentiates coins, right? How does the meter tell the difference between different coins? What do you mean? Well, for example, if someone were to put in a one penny coin, that wouldn't work presumably, would it? No, of course not. So, well, how does the meter know what coin it's been fed uh, is a drop any bit? Oh, I see what you're getting at now. I think I figured it out. I didn't really... F I'm still trying to figure out how the soap is involved. Maybe he blew into the hole and coins popped out the other side. Ew! <laughs> the meter tells coins will pop out their shape and size, which includes their thickness. A threepenny bit is about three quarters of an inch in diameter, you see. Other coins just won't fit. That's what she said. Ah, I see. It's clearly been very well thought out. The witness will amend her formal testimony with that information in case it is pertinent. As you wish, my lord. The meter is designed for coins of the exact diameter and thickness of a threepenny bit. Nothing else will fit. That's what she said! Mata! But conversely then, it would seem that anything matching a three pence coin exactly in terms of diameter and thickness could equally be well could equally well be used. Would that be true? Well, yes, in a way. The weight comes in to a certain extent as well. We thought of that though, anyway. If I take any if I find any fake coins in the coin box when I empty the meter. The contract says the con customer has to pay 100 times the amount they diddle as a fine. Diddle! We live for moments like that, us gasmen do. Live for them, ha ha ha. It would seem the gas company has thought of everything. Wahoo! Hurrah for gas! Hurrah for cash! Ultimate all the way! That's quite enough of that. Remind me, how big are threepenny bits? About three quarters of an inch across. What do you think, Mr. Naruhodo? Is this 2 centimeters measurement significant? Or perhaps there's some other aspect of the meter's construction that we should be focusing on? Yes, you may be right. Perhaps I should try a different tack here. Like asking about whether the meter can be dismantled, for example. Um... Um... Yeah, I guess, delve deeper. How can the meter be dismantled? Dismantled? Yes, given that there are no signs of it having been forced. I'm wondering if perhaps rather than being broken open, it might have been taken apart. Well, yes, that does make some sense. The padlocks are made by a first-class locksmith from the finest quality steel. 
When the meter box itself is made from plate steel as well, build it shut to ensure it can't be opened again. I can assure you it's quite impossible to dismantle it. Wahoo! Yeah, nothing leaks from an ultimate meter. No coins, no gas, no nothing. I see. The witness will lament a formal testimony with that information in case it is pertinent. As you wish, my lord. All joints on the meter are welded shut and the lock is made from solid steel. There's no way to dismantle. Do I have anything in my... Um, because if you look here, there's clearly some liquid on the bottom. Why is there a broken bar of soap in the middle? Why was he passed out? That's just for the tea, that's the meter. The cups just show that he held on to the tea until later. Envelope, should I the envelope again? Is it worth investigating? No, it has a check mark. That means I already saw it. That means no new information. Oh. This changed. Oh, look at this bar of soap. There's a circular depression on the side, about two centimeters across. Or three quarters of an- <gasps> That's what the things are! He's making- He's making coins in the shape of the soap. He freezes it outside, he puts it into the meter to be the whatever weight and size it is, and like, as the room gets warmer, it'll melt and he'll put it back in the soap. But then how come last night, he didn't do it? What? No, oh, maybe he, he tried to do it, but he drank the tea. And so he didn't get to put the soap in, um... He's making coins in the shape of the soap. Uh, I mean, like, but you know what I'm trying to say. He's making coins in that circular indent of the soap. So last night, he drank the tea. He was knocked out. He couldn't, he couldn't collect the coins. So... Eh. We did find the soap at the scene, didn't we? Yes, yes, there were two bars on that little ledge just outside the window. So we took this one. But I'm sure that when we first found it, there was some sort of reddish medallion in the middle there. I remember it clearly. Yes, but there's no sign of it now. Where could it have gone? It could have melted! Okay, so I present the soap. Um, there's no way to dismantle it. Didn't have a single coin it. So where do I present it? Hmm. Hmm. didn't have a single coin in it. Do I just present it here? No, it's wrong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Wrong one. Wrong one. Didn't have a single coin in it. All joints in the meter are bullish shut and the lock is made from solid steel. There's no way to dismantle it. Somehow he's using all flaming guns when it's not not even what is. Um, let me try pressing it. No, I'm pressing it here. Present presents. Gosh darn it! Ah, it's not that statement. And is it the? Is it this one? It has to be the soap. It has to be the soap. Gosh, darn it! Mm. What am I doing wrong? Oh, do I have to like... Do I have to press this again? 
Has anyone ever tried? Oh yeah, they've tried, but they've all given up before long. After all, if they actually broke the meter, the company would be able to take legal action. Yes, that makes sense. What do you think, Mr. Nato? Is its wel welded steel construction significant? Or perhaps there's some other aspect of the meter's construction that we should be focusing on. Yes, you may be right, but perhaps I should try a different tack here, like asking about the meter to range. Oh! Oh! I have to ask about the coin! Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you differentiate coins? Oh, the size and the shape! That's what I have to present the soap on. It's not the welded shut. That's so stupid! Wow, that's stupid. Exact diameter, thickness of thruppany, but nothing else will fit. That's what she said. There we go! Let me just confirm something here. If the diameter and thickness were to be correct, the meter would accept any object as if it were a thruppany bit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Well, by something of a coincidence, while we were investigating Mr. Shamsphere's room, we found a particular item that matches the dimensions perfectly. Something the same size as a thruppany bit? What was it? The item in question is this. What? Well, have you been inhaling gas? That's a boss soap! I really don't like the way his head wobbles, it's really freaky. It certainly looks nothing like a thruppity bit, I must say. It looks like I'm going to have to point out exactly what I mean here. What's so important about the soap is this part here. Drop the soap, don't drop the soap, baby. Drop the soap! I don't like the way they don't get to the point. Yeah. Yeah. You have to turn over the soap to see what I mean. Oh! Are you referring to that round depression in the middle of the soap there? That's right, a depression that is a, that's approximately three quarters of an inch in diameter. Or in other words, almost exactly the same size as a thruppany bit. Get away! Does anyone here present have- Does anyone here present have in their possession a thruppany bit? Quickly now, hand over your coins, ladies and gentlemen. Sounds rather like a highway robbery, doesn't it? Thanks to a kind member of the public in the gallery, I have here a thruppity bit. Now, to see if it fits. My word, it could be more snug. Yes, as I suspected. This, without a doubt, is a vital clue to explain how the Altamont Gas Company is being defrauded. Well, I don't believe it. Want bobblehead of him on your stand, Jill? Absolutely not. I do not want that. More like a throbbing bit. <laughs> so, your assertion amounts to what? That some inferior bar of soap has a tentative connection to the theft of gas. Yes. The depression in the soap was clearly made by a throbbing bit. I must concur, at least, that pushing a coin with some force into a poor quality ball of soap is such as this. It's a remarkably simply simple way of replicating the coin's shape. And then you can use, well, some melted wax or something to pour into the mold. You can make fake coins in no time. Oh my gosh, her skirt is also striped. This brings all the pieces of the puzzle together. It's the method Mrs. Shamspear has been using to steal the gas. That's the missing link. And now I've followed a chain of thoughts. It's going to bring me to a new explanation for what happened in no that nobody's considered yet. But this is all nonsense. If the man had been making fake coins, my worker here would have found them when he emptied the meter. Quite true, Lady Altamont. In the absence of some black magic that could make them disappear. Is that why he's called Shamspear? Mm -hmm. He's a sham! There is one form of black magic that could cause the fake coins to disappear into thin air, yes. Exactly. And the meter here gives it away. What on earth? There are remnants of the magical method used visible on the gas meter taken from the victim's room. If 
that is your assertion, counsel. The defense will identify these remnants for the court at once. Where on earth, where on the meter can the remnants of the method used be blah 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 Right here. Oh, cool. I guess he put in ice coins. I think he put in melted... It's not ice because it's red. But I don't know what it is. We found this bar of soap at the scene of the crime just outside the victim's window. Outside? Yes, outside, where you yourself, Mr. Meterman, were loitering in the freezing winter air. That's where we found the soap. Ah, I get it. That's right. The answer, of course, is ice. It is ice, but why was it red? Oh, it's probably red because of the inside of the meter. Did you say ice? Mr. Shamsbury has been leaving soaps like this outside his window each evening, filled with water. After a night outside in a bitter cold, the water is completely frozen solid the next morning. Then he takes his fake coins of ice and feeds them into the gas meter, giving him light and warmth in spades. As his room becomes very comfortably warm, the ice is now inside the meter's coin box melts, turning back into water, and draining harmlessly away through the small hole made in the underside of the meter. That is how, without leaving any evidence of his wrongdoing, this man has been stealing Altamont gas. Just like that. So simply. Oh, sham wow, I just got that joke. <laughs> Cause he's a sham! Sham wow! Is, is he trying to make us look like idiots? He's been fooling us all with some bars of soap and some water. That's right, madam. I don't believe it. It can't be true. Do you have any idea how much money we spent to develop that new meter? And now you have the audacity to suggest that a bit of soap and some water can render it totally useless. I'm fairly sure I didn't design it. Evidence. Sorry? I want evidence! If you're going to stand there and tell me our meters are rubbish, I want to see proof! He is very good at enforcing accountability, isn't she? Very well, Lady Altamont. If you'd like evidence, I'll provide it. What? Mr. Nadohodo, are you saying- Oh, I missed it! Whatever. I did notice a trace of something that bothered me a little at the time. And I have a feeling that this theory we've come up with now could explain it. A piece of evidence that substantiates the theory about how Mr. Shamsbury has been stealing gas is the photo! Because it has a puddle! This is a photograph of the scene at the point when the victim was discovered, taken by Inspector Gregson. And it clearly shows the remnants of the crime carried out by Mr. Shamsbury. What remnants? Here you can see the gas meter on the wall in Mr. Shamsbury's room. Now, look closely at the floorboards directly underneath the meter. What? What is that? Some kind of grubby stain. Almost certainly, it's a water stain resulting from the liquid that drained out the hole made in the meter. Oh! If one coin gives around two hours of gas usage and the occupant was heating his room in all his waking hours, we could imagine he would have used around ten of his fake coins each day. The melting ice inside the meter's coin box would have been dripping out almost constantly. Leaving a stain on the floor. This, this is awful. And there's further evidence, too. Mr. Shamsbury is slumped over his table, apparently having consumed strychnine. And right there next to him is a bar of soap, broken in half. Right. It would appear to me then, Council. But the man was eating the soup, was he? Pardon me for disagreeing with your lordship, but... Certainly not. He didn't beat about the bush there, did he? In truth, Mr. Shamsbury was found with a fork in his hands. A meal of soap is sounding increasingly likely. Oh, do you mean to say he was using that fork to... Yes. To extract the frozen coin from the bar of soap. Oh. But the bar broke in half. But perhaps it didn't go very well. Good gracious. But he still drank the tea, and he still got knocked out, so who do it?
Lord Van Zeeks! And he still gives a kiss. <laughs> I was throwing my hand up in despair. And happened to catch my hollowed bottle on the way. Pray forgive my maladroit mistake. What is the meaning of this council? Allow me to pose my learned friend a question. What exactly did you establish with your most recent cross-examination? Um, well... That Mr. William Shakespeare is a liar and a thief. In other words, that his testimony is unreliable. That's it. That's exactly it. Very well. Let us assume the man is a liar. Now allow me to pose another question. What possible difference does that make? Well... We know that suicide can be discounted. Scotland Yard's investigation revealed no sign of another vessel in that, that contained poison. And on the night in question, there were no visitors to the room except the accused. The young Gasman's testimony, which we have no reason to doubt, has confirmed that. Furthermore, the only possible way the poison could have entered the victim's body is via the tea. The court has seen no evidence whatsoever that suggests otherwise. Even if William Shakespeare is the liar you claim him to be, these facts have been objectively established. There's no escaping it. Too much tinging? Ting, ting. Ah! Therefore, in light of these facts, the prosecution calls for the immediate adjudication. Y you. What? Hold up! Well, counsel, how does the fence respond? Mr. Naruhuru! What was the point of that last cross examination? Did it actually get us anywhere? Or did it make no difference at all? Like Rola Van, Van Zeeks is saying. I uh, gotta raise an objection, right? It has to! I'm innocent! No, this isn't over! The defense will not rest! What? But, counsel, you successfully explained everything! You've identified and substantiated the unscrupulous method employed by Mr. Shamspear to consume gas. What more is there to discuss? Lord Van Seeks just highlighted three facts in order to make his point. But contrary to what he would have the court believe, not all of them have been objectively established at all. What are you trying to say, my Nipponese friend? At least one of those so-called facts is an assumption, made due to a lack of evidence. Hmm? Which one was it? But the situation has changed now, following the cross-examination of the latest witnesses to take the stand. Don't be absurd. What is this nonsense? Yes, when you bring everything we've learned so far together and consider it as a whole, it's clear. There's a question that we now need to reconsider. Namely... Was someone else responsible? Was there another visitor? Was the poison in the tea? There definitely wasn't another visitor. Someone else could have been responsible, but... He had a fork in his hand. Why would he have a... F okay, he had a fork in his hand to get the coin out of the soap. I guess he stabbed too far when he got poisoned, so it broke in half. The M. There was an envelope! <laughs> Is Dracula a good kisser? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> um. There was an envelope. A ripped envelope. So the poison could have been in the envelope! But it wasn't there! So. Maybe the poison was in the envelope in the letter that he read, and not in the tea? We can't say someone else was responsible because we have absolutely no one. He kind of sucks. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Because he's a vampire. Um, so I'm gonna say it was a poison in tea. Because Natsume wasn't... wasn't poisoned. We've all been led to believe that the struck in poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear was in the tea brought to him by Mr. Natsume. But that's conjecture at best. <laughs> The victim has testified that nothing else passed his lips that night. There is no other possibility. And since there was no trace of the tea left at the scene, it couldn't be tested for traces of the poison. That's why you can't say objectively for sure that it was... As I said, the situation has changed. 
because in fact, some of Mr. Nasume's tea was left at the scene. And a particular piece of evidence proves it. A ludicrous claims. Scotland Yard detectives investigated the scene exhaustively. <gasps> oh! He used... He used the tea to make the coins. What evidence are you suggesting they missed? The defense has made a bold claim indeed. Very well, counsel. Present your proof. What's evidence from the scene of crime can tell us about the nature of the defendant's tea. Right? It is the bar- That's why it's red. Because it's the color of the tea. Because normally he would use water. Good gracious. The soap again. The same bar the victim used to fashion his coins of ice. Yes, that's right, my lord. It's just come back to me. Something about when we first found this bar of soap at the scene yesterday. It's more bars of soap. Joe, what are the bars of soap doing left on the land, I'm quite certain that when we originally stumbled upon the bars of soap, there was actually a frozen coin in each bar. So you discovered the gas thief's coin factory. Fascinating. In a way, yes, but there's more. The coins we found in the soap at the time weren't normal ice. But there was something strange about them, you mean? Exactly, something very, something very obviously strange. They were red. The ice was red. No, you mean. That's right, it's obvious to me now. The fake coins in the soap were made from frozen tea. What? I would remind the court of a statement made by Mr. Natsume early in this trial. That evening, yes, I did take some freshly brewed tea to me when I visited Mr. Shamps and Mr. Skip. The public water pump also had all these freezes and nice so I bought bottled water to especially make it. And this is the result. Never will I touch tea again, never. Ah, oh, yes. I believe there had been a snowfall that day. It was particularly cold. Sadly, on such occasions, the poorly constructed water mains in the east end are prone to freezing. On the night in question, Mr. Shamspear, having no running water to use, was forced to use the tea brought by Mr. Natsume in order to make his fake coins. I would. There were two bars of soap on the window ledge when my ju judicial assistant and I investigated the scene. That's right, and we only borrowed one of them. Which means that even as we speak, some of the defendant's tea is still present at the scene of the crime. Frozen solid in a bar of soap, outside Mr. Shamspear's window. Extraordinary. Earlier today, Inspector Gregson informed the court that even if one drop of the tea remained, Scotland Yard would be able to analyze it for poison. As such, we are now in a position to prove or disprove what has until now been mere conjecture. By finding out for sure whether or not Mr. Natsuma's tea actually contains strychnine at all. Ah, you smug Nipponese! I'm not smug, I'm just... Mm, you're, you're the smug one. My lord, we cannot do the defendant the injustice of passing judgment now. The police should be dispatched to recover the remaining bar of soap from the scene at once. And the defense requests a thorough analysis of the frozen tea embedded in it. To determine whether or not it contains any poison. Hurry up, get it now, do it now. Bailiff, bailiff! Instructor police, blah blah blah, love some lord instead. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. It would seem we have no choice but to sit. <gasps> I suspend for the time being. I trust you have no objection, Lord Vanzix. None, my lord. Scotland Yard will cover the tea from the scene and carry out the requisite tests immediately. The trial will resume at the same hour tomorrow. Damn it! Prosecution and defense may conduct further investigations as appropriate in the interim. Damn it, there's another investigation scene! Yes, my lord. Well, 
managed to scrape through there somehow. Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned until tomorrow. To be continued. So, who poisoned Shamspear then? Who sent him the envelope? Okay, well, my throat hurts, so that's gonna be it for me tonight. And then tomorrow, hopefully I could get through all of the investigation part. And then after that, we could just get to the trial and hopefully that'll be it. We could find... Like, we could get to the bottom of this case soon. But yeah, my throat hurts and I'm gonna... I'm gonna go drink water now. So, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all, all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. I'll try to stream tomorrow. No speaking about... <laughs> Klingon. <laughs> Don't forget about Omni Night Night. Alright, have a good night, guys. Bye!